class. Today for creative writing, we're going to talk about something called sequencing. Now that's a pretty big word, but it's very easy to understand. Do you remember on your very first story writing um, that was graded, the George Washington story? I gave you a video to watch that was about the tortoise and the hare. And that video, I think it was a song, was meant to um, explain to you that every story has a beginning, middle, and end. Now, how you come up with the beginning, middle, and end is up to the author. They get to decide, the author gets to decide what is the beginning, what is the middle, and what is the end of your story. And before you develop that into the final draft, you have to go through what's called sequencing. Remember the steps of our writing process? Gather information. Gathering information is you deciding all the events that are going to happen in your story. Then when it is time for you to <coughs> write your thoughts down on paper, that is when the sequencing starts. I have some phrases here. Now, these are not sentences. It's not a complete thought. It's just a few thoughts that I want to put into my story. So you could call this macaroni. I have this thought. Played with his dog. That's not a complete thought, but it's a phrase that I want to use in my story played with his dog, rode his bike. Again, more macaroni for my story. Played ball, another idea that I want to work into my story. Now I'm the author and I get to decide what order these take place in my story. Now it's time for sequencing. So. I need to decide what is going to happen first, second, and third. Now this might not be the very end of my story or the very beginning of my story. Maybe some, maybe these events all happen in the middle, but sequencing starts us putting our words into an order that will make sense to the reader. Now I need to go grab my masking tape and then we are going to work together to put these phrases in the order that we want them to appear in the story. I'll be right back. Okay, so in my story, I want, um, hmm, I want played with his dog to be the first event that happens in my story. So on my piece of paper, I'm going to write the numbers one, two, and three. Played with his dog is going to be number one. So I took that thought and I placed it next to number one. And I know that I'm going to need to add more words to that to make it a complete thought. But for right now, I've gathered my information, and now I want to put that information in an order that will make sense. The next event that I want to have happen in my story is rode his bike. So this is the event that's going to happen next in my story. So I'm going to take this phrase, and I'm going to put that next to number two. rode his bike. That's going to be the second thing that happens in my story. Then that leaves me with my third thought, played ball. So I'm going to put this thought by number three. Played ball. Now those are my phrases and that's the order that I want them to appear in my story. Now, I need to add some words to these phrases to make complete thoughts. I cannot just say, 
played with his dog, rode his bike, played ball. Those are events that happened, but I don't know who did it, where he did it, or why he did it. Now, listen to this story and how I took those phrases, added some cheese to it, and made a story. Caleb played with his dog. That was the first sentence. Rode his bike. I connected these two phrases with a comma. I know that I'm talking about Caleb still. Caleb played with his dog, rode his bike, and then played ball with his friend Todd. Now I did incorporate them into one large sentence, but I added some words. You still have to add words even if you work all of these into one big sentence. I added a name. I said Caleb. So the first word of my sentence was Caleb. I said Caleb played with his dog, comma, rode his bike, comma, and, I added the word and, played ball with his friend Todd. Now that's the end of my sentence, so there's my period. Now this could have been the way I started my story, or maybe it's in the middle, or maybe it's towards the end. Wherever I decide to put this in my big story, because one sentence does not make a story, wherever I decide to put it, this is a complete thought. Kayla played with his dog, rode his bike, and played ball with his friend, Todd. I took these thoughts that I had, I put them in the order that I wanted them to appear, and then I added some cheese to make it a complete thought. Today's lesson, the part that we're focusing on, are the sequencing, the one, the two, the three. I want you to learn how to take lots of thoughts and organize your thoughts. So today's handwriting practice is not to write a sentence. I'm not looking for a complete thought. I'm not looking for a capital letter or, an, or ending punctuation. Can you believe I just said that? I'm not looking for a capital letter because this is not a complete thought. Today, I'm just going to have you number your paper one, two, and three. Next to number one, you're going to write the phrase played with his dog. Next to number two, you're going to write the phrase rode his bike. And next to number three, you're going to write played ball. I'm not having you add the rest of the cheese to make the sentence. I just want you to know that sequencing means to take your thoughts and as you prepare to write the story, put them in the order that they appear. They could be small thoughts in a sentence or they could be bigger thoughts in a story, the beginning, middle, and end. So um, in Google Classroom, I wrote these phrases for you and um, all you need to do is copy them. I am looking for neat writing, which I have to tell you, you are doing an excellent job at. Even without me sitting there watching you, now maybe your parents are, which I appreciate, but it shows me that this is becoming a habit. Neat writing is becoming a habit. And boys and girls, everybody's writing improves at a different at a different pace. You cannot compare your handwriting to somebody else's. 
But what is most important is that by practicing neat handwriting, what you're saying is the assignment that I've been given is important enough to me to do my best. And when you strive to do your best, your neat handwriting will come through. All right, that's it for today. Bye-bye.